Hello everyone and as you can probably see the weather's pissing down outside so what better time to do a video about my British gas masks. So um, I've got quite a few of the British military masks, I don't have all of them sadly but I do have a decent amount. So what I'll do is I'll talk you through what I've got and then you can basically learn some history behind each mask. So the mask on the left is the Mark IV respirator or in the actual full name for it be the General Service Respirator Mark IV but a lot of the time these are just known as the MK4 respirators it's essentially um, a rubber mask covered in a canvas like material then it's got two wide lenses and it's got a speech diaphragm an exhale valve in the centre there the round disc and then um, it's got a tube, rubber tube covered in canvas that goes to a big sort of orange red filter. Now an important note with these World War II British masks is they do have asbestos filters. So if you get one don't wear it unless you sort of put a new filter on it and clean all the insides of the mask out. Because they use blue asbestos in the military masks which is the sort of worst form of as asbestos to inhale. So moving on we have the Mark V respirator or General Service Mark V or MK5 respirator. Now this was replacing the MK4 in service and as you can see it's very similar it's just the actual rubber mask without all of the fancy um, canvas on it and you might be able to tell um, that these don't preserve as well unfortunately because the canvas on the Mark IV actually keeps the mask very well protected from the elements and over time this has sort of broken down the rubber on this um, the actual mask layout is exactly the same as the Mark IV, however on the Mark V there, there is this little rubber um, almost cheek piece and what that's for is um, you can insert a radio microphone into there. Um, they probably moved away from the canvas because it was probably just cheaper to mass produce this. I know this is a type of mask my grandfather had during his service uh, during World War II and that was during sort of D-Day and afterwards so this was to replace the Mark IV and it was probably just because it was cheaper to mass produce it. Okay and then we have the light anti-gas respirator Mark II or Mark I depending on how you look at this. There was a version before this which was the prototype so a lot of people call that Mark I. And this is the Mark II and this was designed to take actual filter canisters rather than sort of removable canisters rather than the ones permanently attached like on the Mark IV and Mark V. So it takes a 60mm filter on the side and it has a very basic voice diaphragm and exhale valve and has the same type of lenses and straps as the Mark IV and V. But what makes this one actually um, not as good in some ways as those is the voice diaphragms are much better on the um, general service respirators on the light anti-gas ones. Anyway, the light anti-gas mask was designed to be used by paratroopers and it was designed to be more compact and then the version of this came out called Mark III which was essentially um, what the Canadian C3 is, some of the parts are interchangeable on them as well. Um, and then that was used until the end of the 60s and then this mask came along. This is the SR6 or S6 respirator, first produced in the early 70s until about the mid 80s when it was replaced by the S10. Made by both Avon and this mine's a Birmingham, Birmingham rubber company one. Um, I can double check that. Leyland and Birmingham rubber, yeah. So um, this took a 40mm filter so it was sort of more of a modernised NATO mask has much wider lenses on them but they ha create a sort of fisheye effect which kind of disorientates you when you're wearing it. Um, a voice diaphragm that works quite well, an exhale valve, 40mm intake, sort of a strap head harness and what's interesting here is there's a cheek piece you can inflate using this little nozzle here and when you inflate that what that does is it means you can adjust the actual internal fit of the mask which is a really nice feature and surprisingly no masks have done this since then okay then moving on what we have here is the S10 the S10 was made by Avon Rubber and it was to replace the S6 in about mid 80s um, 
See, this is quite a famous mask, just because they use it in so many games and films and everything. The S6 itself was actually used by the SAS during the Operation Nimrod Iranian Embassy Siege, so it's quite famous. You can see it in action there. Then this arm was the mask that replaced it. It takes 40mm filters again. It's got much better lenses on this one. I'd say the S6 is actually more of a comfortable fit than this. This also has a drinking tube on it and a radio output so it's easier to actually use. Interestingly, this is 87, this S6 is dated, and it is 87, that the, um, sorry, the S10 is dated 87, so is the S6. So they both produced in the same year, although this is a mask that replaced this one in service. Okay, then last we have the Scott GSR, or Scott General Service Respirator, and this is the mask that the British Army are now changing from the S10 to use. I've already done a full video where I talk about this one because it's better in a lot of ways than the S10. And this is a very modern mask, it takes a completely new kind of filter that's designed to stop you inhaling gas while you change the filters over. And also lets you change one filter over and keep breathing through the other filter while you do it. Voice diaphragm in the middle there, has a drinking tube on it as well. And most importantly the lenses are a sort of a one single visor that means it's much better to see through than the two visors or the two separate lenses. Well I hope that's been informative for everyone. And um, yeah, some interesting masks here. Thank you for watching.